Cahirig. Uh, I welcome the opportunity to speak on this important bill. The purpose of the bill is primarily focused on addressing housing supply issues with a view to facilitating increased activity in the housing construction sector, particularly in the Dublin area, where the supply shortage is particularly acute. Um, and as a Dublin deputy, I must say I'm very much aware of that on a, on a, on a daily basis. By, t uh, by targeting empty sites, I believe that the urban regeneration will become more common and that instead of blight of wasteland in our communities, we will instead see positive developments adding to our communities. The main provisions of the bill are the revision of the Part 5 arrangements on social and affordable housing, as well as retrospective application of reduced development contribution charges, which is being done given the changes to the economy which made the previous charges um, unrealistic. I welcome very much the introduction of a vacant site levy to incentivise urban regeneration and the provision of housing in central urban areas. The bill gives effect to a number of actions outlined in the government's construction strategy 2020 which require legislation. The bill will enable planning authorities to adopt measures to incentivise the use and development of vacant sites in urban areas. The bill provides that from the 1st of January, planning authorities will be empowered to apply an annual vacant site levy of 3% of the market value of vacant sites exceeding 0.1 hectares, which in the planning authority's opinion were vacant in the preceding year in areas identified by the planning authority in its development plan or local area plan for residential development or for regeneration development. Part two of the legislation uh, concerns the vacant site levy. Section 5 of this provides for the definition of a vacant site. In the case of residential lands, it means a site in an area where there is a need for housing. The site is suitable is for provision of housing and the site is vacant. In the case of regeneration land, it means a site that is vacant and has an adverse effect on existing amenities, including a d diminution in the amenities. A site is an area of land exceeding 0.1 hectares, but does not include a structure that is a person's home. There is also provision for the establishment and maintenance of a vacant sites register from 2017 onwards, and I welcome this. Um, I, it will ensure that vacant sites are known and that the existence of a list should provide a baseline action uh, to, for action to be taken in terms of levies, which would, should in turn incentivise work to be progressed on vacant sites. This part of the legislation requires specific, outline specific criteria to be used by the planning authority or on board Pernola on appeal for determining whether or not, uh, one, there was a need for housing in the area, two, uh, that a site was suitable for housing, and three, the site being vacant had adverse effects on existing amenities in the area or, or on the character of the area. I believe this is a very important. It provides a socially oriented framework for deciding what is a vacant site and what is not. And this ensures that the levy is not just about parcels of land and their financial value. It, in this, we are seeing a, a turning away from the Celtic tiger model of money and land running roughshod over social cohesion and community need. With an effect from the 1st of January 2019 and every year thereafter, a planning authority shall, in respect of the pre preceding year, charge a vacant site levy on the market value of a site on the owner of each site included in its vacant site register. The levy shall be payable in arrears or on demand or by instalments if agreed by the planning authority. And I hope, uh, Cahillard, that this levy is collected. I am aware from reports I get from Dublin City Council that there are already uh, vacant site levies outstanding and some well-known Developed, former developers' names are included on that list, and sometimes they, the sums of money can be up to 20 or 30,000 euros, which are still outstanding and haven't been paid. Uh, the levy will continue to be payable annually until the site is developed or brought into use, at which time the site will be removed from the, the register. Where on board Penola determines that a site was not a vacant site, it shall notify the planning authority concerned, who shall remove the relevant entry from the register and cancel the, de the demand made. An owner of a site may also appeal on the grounds that the amount of the levy has been incorrectly calculated. Also, where on board Penola determines the amount of the levy has been incorrectly calculated, it shall notify the correct amount of the planning authority concerned, who shall revise their records accordingly. I wish to refer to the amendments and the association that have been made to the Part 5 of the Planning and Development Act of 2000, which deals with social and affordable housing. Informed by a recent review of the Part 5 provisions, the Bill provides that in future the focus of Part 5 will be on the delivery of social housing.
with a requirement of up to 10% social housing in development in areas of in excess of nine units. In the operation of these revised arrangements, the priority will be to secure social housing units on site. The making of cash payments in lieu of social housing needs to be discontinued, and I very much welcome this. I, I'm aware in the past that some local authorities, particularly parts of the Fingal area, uh, did not, uh, they accepted the, the, the monetary sum of money in, in place of housing, and that has left you know, housing shortage in places like Ballad Oil and parts of Hoth. Uh, and I think that, that uh, I'm glad to see that, that policy has been discontinued. The point of part five is to deliver social housing. The old approach of developers affecting by the binder way out was not helpful, particularly in the Celtic Tiger area. Under this legislation, the plan authority in preparing its housing strategy will be required to consult with approved housing bodies in its functional area and to have regard to relevant housing policies of the government or any minister. It also halves to 10% the percentage of land zoned for residential use or for a mixture of residential and other uses that must be provided for social and affordable housing. Retaining the legal provision in relation to affordable housing provides a robust and constitutionally tested legislative mechanism for the future provision of affordable housing. Previous affordable housing schemes have all been stood down since 2011 and there is no, there is no plans at the moment to, to provide uh, these schemes, but I would hope that in the future they would be, they would be re returned to. Um, it is understandable that due to the need for social housing, the, the, the current focus of Part 5 is placed entirely on providing social housing output. We simply have to just get more houses built. Uh, the housing crisis in Dublin, and indeed in my Dublin North East constituency and elsewhere, is, is, to, is um, to be perfectly honest, is very severe at the moment. And it must be tackled as a priority by government and by local authorities and by Dublin City Council, by Fingal County Council as well. I understand that it is intended to issue a statutory ministerial policy directive under Section 29 of the Act to planning authorities, directing that until the issue of a further ministerial Directive, developers shall fulfil their Part 5 obligation in the forms of social housing only. only. Part 5 of the legislation amends Section 95 of the 2000 uh, Planning Act by requiring a planning authority to have regard to the overall strategy for the proper planning and development and sustainable development of the area of the development plan when ensuring sufficient and suitable land is zoned for residential use or for a mixture of residential and other uses, and I support this as planning authorities need to ensure that the communities within their remit are, are well balanced and, that, uh, and factor in these needs in those communities. The transfer of completed units on other land not subject to the planning permission is also provided for. This allows social housing units to be delivered in, other, in another location in the event that the, the development is the subject of the planning permission does not meet the social housing or mixed tenure needs of the local authority. Provision is also made for the Part 5 obligation to be fulfilled by developers through long-term leasing of properties and rental accommodation availability agreements. These latter options reflect amendments that were provided uh, in, the, in the Section 38 of the Planning and Development Act 2010, but, but it had not been commenced. I would like to conclude by saying that uh, the Labour Party and Government uh, are addressing the housing crisis by providing massive resources into constructing uni units which will start to come on stream in a couple of years. Unfortunately, it takes between a year, a year and a half before we can see the end result. But I think the important thing is that the resources are being provided and the priority has been set and local authorities are, are being given the task to, 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 uh, to deal with this and to come up with solutions quickly. I am glad to support this uh, legislation. I commend Minister Alan Kelly and Minister Coffey for their hard work in this area. Given the scale of the housing crisis, I do think this legislation needs to be supported, and I commend the bill to the House. Thank you.